Okay. Hi, I'm Anthony. He's just Rick Borty. This is the science of pretzels. Today we're going to be making Philadelphia uh, soft style pretzels. Yes, we are. And for that, we're going to need one package of active dry yeast, one cup, uh, one and one fourth cup actually of warm water. We're going to need a teaspoon of sugar, two teaspoons of salt. Of course, four to five cups of our good old flour. Um, four teaspoons of baking powder, currently offset. Shortening, also offset. And bowls and pans and pots for mixing and stirring. And of course, our cookie sheet. All right. Remember this kids, soap, soap, soap. All right, now we're gonna add the yeast. Uh, two and a quarter teaspoon of yeast uh, for the activation and the proofing. That's one. That's two. All right, all right. So now we're gonna mix this up, you know. I'll let it sit for about five minutes to uh, get the yeast proofing. All right, all right. So we'll let just uh, just sit here for a bit, you know. While it's eating the sugar solution, you know. Yes. Now let's talk about some fun facts about yeast. Saccharomyces cerevisiae. Hello, I'm Leah and I'm here to talk about yeast, which is very important to the process of making pretzels. Yeast is a leavening agent that consumes glucose and it produces carbon dioxide gas when it's added to dough because it feeds on sugar and the gas creates tiny air pockets and it makes the pretzels lighter and crispier. Hi, it's Tony back again. So we have a visual representation of the yeast. The yeast uh, thus consumes the glucose when we add it into the dough and the natural monosaccharides in the carbohydrate chains. Uh, when this happens, the metabolism of the glucose produces CO2, as Leah has just mentioned. So our next step in the process is to add uh, four cups of all-purpose flour into the mixture. I already have uh, three cups pre-proportioned here. It's one, two, three. One, two, three, you go. Just, uh... All right, now we're gonna add uh, the fourth cup here. You know, just level it out with a knife. Precise, you know. <laughs> Spank that one too. There you go. All right. All right, now we're gonna mix it to incorporate the, the yeast mixture. All right now we're mixing in some salt and kosher salt mixture. Yeah. For our Jewish friends out there. <laughs> At this stage, we've realized that this this uh, dough might be a little bit dry. So, well, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a teaspoon of lukewarm water. Um, at this stage, I'm gonna make sure the water at the right temperature. It gotta be warm. One teaspoon at a time. Oh. All right, all right. Lukewarm water, one teaspoon at a time. How is that for you? Thank you. Keep going. Uh, let's yeah, one more. Let's put it on the, the dry stuffs. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You feel? I feel. All right. If your dough at this point looks a bit shaggy, don't give up. Uh, it'll take about ten minutes to get fully elastic. At this point, we're just about ready to put it in the grease pan. Uh, then we're gonna proof it for about <laughs> forty-five minutes. Let's dive into this topic a little more. So, when making dough, some of the water is absorbed by starch granules in the flour, but the rest gets tightly bound to the proteins by hydrogen bonding, forming massive branched aggregates of a hundred or more molecules called gluten. Next, we're going to talk about the kneading of gluten. Hi, my name is Andrew. Today we're going to be talking about the gluten we use today. So there's something called monosaccharides, which are in the flour, and then we use the hydrogens in the monosaccharides formed with the OH, which then created uh, cross-links in a hydration reaction. So the reason why we uh, kneaded the dough was because it created more cross-links which is why it became more stringy. All right, now we're gonna add a damp towel over the uh, over the pot so we can have it ready to proof. All right, here's a little tip for you guys. Uh, to get it ready for proofing for 45 minutes, we're gonna heat the oven up, and it's already preheated to about 170. Then we turn it off to get it ready to uh, uh, proofing temperature. Which is 120 degrees Fahrenheit. Yes. It's optimal. We're gonna set that in there and give it a small push. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Let that sit I, I there. know you do. I know you do. Uh, from uh, now, we're going to wait about 45 minutes until it full proofs. Okay. <laughs> so we just grabbed the dough out of the oven, and now we're going to form them into the shape of pretzels. So first, you want to take a chunk of dough and roll it into a worm. Yeah, make sure it's not too thick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, be sure to use the cooking surface. 
Oh, that'll give you the best results. Yeah. You actually turn it See, right here, it's too thick. Make it thinner. Okay, and once you have the long enough piece of dough, you're going to want to take the two ends. You're going to twist them. I'd say about a quarter inch of thickness. And then you're going to place them down. And you'll have roughly the shape of a pretzel. This is a best. All right, we are on our last few pretzels. If you'd like to come over and see what we've got so far. The smell of shortening is really getting <laughs> to me. So it makes uh. about 10 pretzels if you make them small, but if you were to make larger pretzels, it would probably make three to four. Yeah, uh, those are some big pretzels for some big people. Yeah, we're going for a larger volume here, so ridiculously thick by all standards. Okay, so here are our final That's products. Every degree. This is the thick last one. Good, yes. good. So like these are going to go into the oven, or first we're going to boil them. Guys, so we're now just putting the uh, pretzels back on the baking sheet. Beautiful consistency. All right, so beautiful. Uh, about this time, we're ready to put on the kosher salt, so they spectacular. Can, uh, yeah. So different from the recipe, I am adding kosher salt onto the pretzels, which is a thicker version of salt. All right, now that we have all of our pretzels ready and boiled, we are going to go head over to the oven that's been preheating to 475 degrees Fahrenheit. What's going on right now in the oven? Uh, we're currently witnessing the Maillard reaction taking place where the amino acids and the carbohydrates are being reduced into simple sugars and the browning occurs on the top of the pretzels. Hey, it's Tony. We're back again. Uh, now we're going to talk about the Maillard reaction. The Maillard reaction is one of the most important parts of making great crispy brown uh, pretzels. So the main part of the Maillard reaction is we're gonna introduce browning to the baked, uh, baked product. So first we're gonna have an amino acid present in the carbohydrates of the bread dough. So then it's gonna go through a process called deprotonation. We're basically introducing a carbonyl group and it turns into another intermediate and a whole bunch of other steps. And what that results in is something called a chromatide. So by the end of this process, we'll have a, a nice brown color and the aromas coming off of this are just great. So the pretzels are just about done. Oh my God! Maillard reaction has taken place. Ooh, look at that golden brown. Very nice. Wow, this is the best pretzel I have ever had. And that was the size of the pretzels. Yeah, thanks for watching. Remember this, kids, soap, soap, soap. You know, I never leave home without a bottle of hand sanitizer, and I suggest you do the same. Like, I, I take hygiene very seriously. Ready? Now let's talk about some so fun facts. Okay, thank you. Spank it. There you go. There you go. All right. Okay, wait, no, we're not ready. Okay, ready, set, go. That's where it's at. All right. So this is warm, good thing. All right, we're about to go dump this in there. All right, we can cut that. Yeah, feel that dough? Uh-huh. Cut it. One thing we believe here here in America is teamwork. At this point, I am uh, I'm being a I'm being a good uh, uh, host on this TV show and uh, rolling this man's uh, lab coat up. How's that for you, buddy? Great, buddy. <laughs> Once again, it's in the country. How does it feel, Anthony? How has it changed since when you started eating? You know, it's it's gotten a bit more uh, stretchy. You know, ooh, the gluten fibers are forming. Ooh, you like? <laughs> yeah. Oh. Uh. <laughs> all right. So right now we're gonna prep the kosher salt. Uh, we're gonna sprinkle it all over the top of these. God damn, praise the thickness, Lord. <laughs> they thick red salt. <laughs> you do that after. I tell you, praise the <laughs> thickness, Lord. That is a thick pretzel. Ow! <laughs> that is. Jesus. <laughs> we can't do this. I can't do this. <laughs> we can't do this. <laughs> Bloopers. In See, baking I think we can just know how it goes from thin, <laughs> thick, thicker. 
Thanks. <laughs> With like seven C's. <laughs> oh lord. Okay. We're done. Why you do that? My mouth is just... Yeah, we're really good. We can do this. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> yes. mm. The best goddamn pretzel I've ever tasted. Look at that consistency. It's so oh, good. There's a crisp. A little bit of buttery flavor, you know? Mm. I feel soft that crunch. The, soft on the inside, hard on the outside. This is the perfect pretzel. I feel like a basic white girl all over again. <laughs> <laughs> like a basic white girl. Alright, let's... It's like... Who wants to run doing the spatula? Let's take the spatula. So what's happening right now in the oven? Uh, so... Yeah, tell me, Tony, what's going on there? What's going on there, buddy? What's going on? No. I'm real curious. Oh, my lord, no. Retry. You, moral support. <laughs>